Welcome to Gamer Poets. I'm Michael, and I will be your guide. We strive to create the most informative and easy to navigate tutorials available. Driven by fewer feedback and contribution, what some do in multiple videos, we do in one. Since we provide so much information, we also provide navigation to accommodate your individual needs as best as possible. Those who have seen this introduction will have already selected the first section anchor to skip to the tutorial itself. Feel free to do so as there is nothing new to view here. Navigation is appropriately labeled within the sidebar. Annotations will bring you to each major section. Occasionally, if needed, a submenu will drop down to extend the navigation of the current section. Section. This is implemented to allow you to skip ahead in a progressive manner without having to check the video description or without having to lose your place while dragging on the timeline. However, the description does provide navigation to every piece of this tutorial step by step. I recommend that it be utilized in subsequent viewings for even faster reference. Finally, video platforms such as YouTube are subject to change. While our interface has been designed to weather future amendments, the older this video becomes, the more potential there is for the annotations to be hindered. And that's that. I hope that you find some value in the video ahead. And don't be afraid to use the pause button. It's there for a reason. Take care, and I'll see you soon. Here we will cover both the basic and recommended system requirements, as well as the current version of the game at the time of this video's upload. System Requirements The Operating System The Skyrim Special Edition requires Windows 7 or later, however, only 64-bit versions can be utilized. CPU The minimum, vanilla game, requirement is an Intel i5-750 or an AMD Phenom 2 X4-945. The recommended minimum for heavy modders is an Intel i5-2400 or an AMD FX8320. And an ideal CPU would be an i5-6500 or better. System RAM The minimum vanilla game requirement is 8GB. The recommended minimum for heavy modders is 16GB. Ideally, the more RAM that you have, the better. GPU The minimum vanilla game requirement is 2GB of VRAM. Recommended for heavy modders is 4GB of VRAM or higher, and ideally, the more VRAM that you have, the better. Disk Space The minimum requirement is 6GB of free HDD space. The recommended minimum for modders is 30GB of free HDD space. And ideally, you would like to have a dedicated 256GB SDD or larger and 100GB of free space on an HDD for mod archive storage. For those who care to view a more in-depth chart regarding chipsets and graphics cards, visit the unofficial Elder Scrolls Pages System Requirements page. A link is provided in the video description. Game Version This tutorial requires a legit and up-to-date version of Skyrim SE. The latest version is 1.3.9.0. Outdated or stolen copies are not guaranteed to work properly, if at all, when modding your game later on. To see what version of the game you have, go to Steam, Steam Apps, Common, Skyrim Special Edition. Right-click the Skyrim SE.exe. Open Properties. Open the Details tab. Here, you will find the game version. Windows User Account Control has been known to and proven to interfere with certain modding applications downstream. If Steam is installed to one of the Program Files or Program Files 86 folders, be sure to apply the installation location steps in the following section. If Skyrim SE is already installed and you are searching for a workaround to this issue, view the User Account Control video linked in the description. Apply the steps within to the Skyrim Special Edition folder itself. Those who still need help, leave a comment and I will do my best to respond. Those who have already installed Steam outside of the Program Files folders can ignore the UAC information altogether. Here we will cover three different ways to install Skyrim SE, as well as how to avoid the Program Files folders from the beginning. Option 1. For those who already own Skyrim SE via Steam. First, if you own 32-bit Skyrim and all of its DLC, you also own the Skyrim Special Edition. It should have been automatically added to your library for free. Open Steam. Navigate to your library. Right-click Skyrim Special Edition. Select Install. Choose Location for Install. 
Select the location outside of the Program Files and Program Files 86 folders. Option 2. For those yet to purchase Skyrim SE, or for those who didn't previously own 32-bit Skyrim and all of its DLC, go to store.steampowered.com. Search for and select Skyrim Special Edition. Enter your birth date to continue. Select Add to Cart. Select Purchase for Myself. Sign in if you aren't already. Complete the purchase. If the install window does not automatically open after your purchase, open the Steam application. Go to your library. Right-click Skyrim Special Edition. Select Install Game. At the install window, choose Location for Install. Select the location outside of the Program Files and Program Files 86 folders. Select Next. If you receive a Terms window, select I Agree. After installation begins, select Finish. Option 3. Installation from Disk. The benefit to having the game Disk is that installation will be faster than downloading the game from Steam. Although you have the game on Disk, you will still need to log into Steam to finish the installation. Insert the disk into your computer. Push the Windows key plus R to open Run. In the Run window, type the Steam drive letter, colon, backslash, Steam, backslash, Steam.exe, space, dash install, space, the DVD drive letter, colon. Select OK and follow the prompts. Here we will establish the basic file paths and any files needed for the game to function. We will also cover and compare all of the launcher settings, express some concerns, and establish a good starting point for future tweaking. Launch Skyrim SE through Steam or via the Skyrim SE Launcher.exe. The Skyrim SE Launcher is located in Steam, Steam Apps, Common, Skyrim Special Edition. Simply bringing up the Skyrim SE menu will establish all registries and any files. Without doing this, certain modding applications will not work. Select Options. If the Detecting Video Hardware window opens, select OK to default all game values based on your system's capabilities. Graphics Adapter and Resolution. Aspect Ratio displays the proportional relationship between your monitor's width and height. Resolution. Set to the highest resolution that your monitor can handle. Lower the resolution to trade quality for better performance. Anti-aliasing. Directly related to the jagged and crawling lines at the edges of objects. While FXAA is not a bad choice, TAA smooths out the jagged edges much better and further blurs the edges that you do see. Select TAA Best Quality. If using an EMB graphical preset, set to Off Best Performance. Windowed Mode. If activated, Skyrim Special Edition will run in a window on the desktop as opposed to utilizing the entire screen. This allows you to maintain a sharp in-game image while running the game lower than your monitor's native resolution. I have windowed mode deactivated. Borderless. Inaccessible until windowed mode is activated. With the borderless checkbox enabled, the trim around the window, the window's border, will be removed. Detail. All of the settings mentioned from here on can be raised, lowered, and or turned off and on to trade quality for performance. Test them for your own system. While modding your game will use more resources over time, these settings are a good, middle-of-the-road starting point for everyone. Furthermore, changing any of the settings from here on out within the launcher will reset your any files. It is recommended to only use the launcher before modding your game to avoid errors. When you have begun modding, you should edit the any files directly and avoid the launcher altogether. Choosing the Low, Medium, High, or Ultra option will implement a preset of values for all of the options within the Advanced tab. Choosing Default will reset all settings to what they were at the end of the Basic Registry and any files opening. Open the Advanced section. Shadow Quality Shadow Quality affects the overall quality of shadows, set to Ultra. Shadow Distance This affects the distance at which shadows can be seen, set to Ultra. Decal Quantity Affects the number of decals such as dirt, blood, and scorch marks. Set to high. God rays quality. Affects the overall quality of the game's god rays. This is personal preference. When set to high, god rays and riften appear damn near magical to me. When set to low, I don't get that same feeling. They become more blurred and less impactful. 
However, I can see why some would prefer the latter. There is also a decent performance impact when setting god rays to high. More than just a performance impact, your FPS may fluctuate in areas where god rays pop in and out, which can become annoying in time. I suggest to set god rays to high, low, or off while taking your system into consideration. I personally have god rays quality set to high. Screen Space Reflections allows various objects to generate reflections on various surfaces. As with all settings, you can disable it later to save some performance if needed. I have Screen Space Reflections activated. Screen Space Ambient Occlusion, or SSAO, is a technique for efficiently approximating the ambient occlusion effect in real time. Ambient occlusion is a method to approximate how bright light should be shining on any specific part of a surface based on the light source in its environment. In other words, SSAO provides real-time shadowing across every piece of the game. There will be a performance hit when activated. You can turn it off later if you need the FPS. I have Screen Space Ambient Occlusion activated. Precipitation Occlusion This prevents rain, and in theory, mist and fog from moving through structures such as roofs. There should be no FPS loss. Activate the checkbox. The Snow Shader The Special Edition Snow Shader does what it says, kind of. It tones down the brightness of snow that is attached to various objects, most noticeably rocks. It then adds a spatter of tiny snow bits around them. The performance impact is low, but the effect is not necessarily desirable. Until I install the mod that utilizes the effect, I will personally keep the snow shader deactivated. Lens Flare Lens Flare adds a subtle lens flare to all light sources in the game. These include fires, giant fires, and candles. As far as I can tell, it does not affect the sun. This is personal preference. I like the lens flare on some objects, but I don't on others, and any visual effect will require at least a little performance. I have Lens Flare deactivated. 64-bit render targets increases visual precision and generates more pixel information. Textures, god rays, and colors will be rendered in 64-bit opposed to 32-bit. This does have a small performance hit and it's not noticeable to everyone. However, I suspect that some modders could take advantage of this. In brightly lit scenes, when activated, it helps to eliminate color banding. I have this checkbox activated. View Distance Object Fade controls the distance at which a range of non-critical world objects such as rocks, fences, and pathways are visible. I would generally inform you to set this slider in the center. However, I've noticed that there are rare times when LOD will not properly switch off unless Object Fade is turned all the way up. I don't know why this happens. All that I do know is that it does happen occasionally when the slider is set anywhere other than to the far right or left. I have the slider at its max. Actor Fade controls the distance at which characters and creatures can be seen. Place the slider in the center. Grass Fade controls the amount and distance at which grass, shrubs, and small bushes are visible. I have the slider at its max. Item Fade controls the distance at which items such as weapons, armor, and potions can be seen. Place the slider in the center. Large Object Distance this controls the distance at which critical world objects such as houses, windmills, and chunks of mountains fade from view and or switch to LOD. I have the slider at its max. Distant Object Detail Distant Object Detail controls the level of detail placed on distant objects such as hills and mountains, set to ultra. Object Detail Fade this is personal preference. It causes subtle detail reduction in the furthest active grids and some may not even recognize a difference. A very small quality gain is had when lowered. I have this set to low. When you have finished making your choices, close the advanced window, select OK on the main Skyrim SE options window, select exit. Installing Skyrim SE can be time consuming. Reinstalling Skyrim SE from an archive is much faster than downloading the files from Steam. Creating an unmodified backup will allow you to quickly reinstall the game if it is ever deleted. If you ever uninstall Skyrim, returning the files from the archive that we are going to create to their former locations will reinstall it. This is not necessary, and I don't personally do this, but for those of you who this may benefit, navigate to Steam, Steam Apps, Common. Right-click and copy the Skyrim Special Edition folder. Paste it to your desktop. Navigate to the Operating Systems Drive Letter. Users, your user account name, Documents, My Games. Copy the Skyrim Special Edition folder. 
Go to your desktop, create a new folder, name it My Games. Paste the Skyrim Special Edition folder inside of the new My Games folder. In the file directory bar, navigate to the operating system's drive letter, users, your user account name, app data, local, Skyrim Special Edition. If you do not have permission to access your app data folder, you will have to enable folder permissions. A link to how is in the video description. Copy all of the folder's contents. Go to the desktop. Create a new folder. Name it App Data. Within App Data, create another folder. Name it Local. Create a final folder within Local and name it Skyrim Special Edition. Paste the information just copied in this new Skyrim Special Edition folder. On your desktop, click and drag the mouse over all three new folders. Skyrim Special Edition, My Games, App Data. Right-click and select Add to Archive. Name the archive Vanilla Skyrim Special Edition. To uninstall Skyrim SE, navigate to Steam, Steam Apps, Common. Right-click the Skyrim Special Edition folder, delete it. Navigate to Users, Your User Account, My Documents, My Games. Right-click the Skyrim Special Edition folder and delete it. Navigate to the Operating System Drive Letter, Users, Your User Account Name, App Data, Local. Right-click the Skyrim Special Edition folder and delete it. This section of the guide will quickly go over the major points of everything that has been discussed as a summary. We are going to be short and fast here. For those of you who are returning strictly for some quick referencing, this section is for you. Assure that your system meets the basic requirements. If you plan on modding, the basic requirements will not be enough. Assure that you have a legit and up-to-date version of the game. If Steam is installed to the Program Files folders, install Skyrim SE outside of the original Steam directory. If Skyrim SE is already installed to the original Steam directory, view the UAC video linked in the description and apply the steps within to the Skyrim Special Edition folder. If you own 32-bit Skyrim and all of its DLC, the Special Edition is free. Be sure to install the Skyrim Special Edition outside of the Program Files folders to avoid UAC issues. If you own the game on disk, you still need to use Steam to finish the installation process, but your download time will be shorter than if you bought the game on Steam itself. Launching the game through Steam or via the SKSE Launcher will establish all of the file paths and any files needed to both play and mod the game later. Only use the launcher to adjust settings before you start modding the game to avoid resetting your any files. If you want to view video comparisons of each launcher setting, watch the full section in this guide. Creating a vanilla backup of the game may save you some time in reinstalling the game if you ever delete it. Back up the Skyrim Special Edition folder, all of its contents in the Steam directory, in My Games, and within App Data. To delete everything that Skyrim SE installed, be sure to not only delete the Skyrim Special Edition folder from the Steam directory, but also from My Games and from within App Data. I'd like to thank you all for joining me in this adventure. While the installation steps themselves are pretty similar to other Bethesda games, for those of you who have viewed our other tutorials, I hope that at least the settings comparisons could help you out a bit. I'd like to give a thank you to some people who don't even know they're being thanked. To G1ZMO2K of the Steam Forums for one of his perfectly simple definitions. To Mtin of the Steam Forums for some very helpful screenshots and Photoshop info. To Wikipedia for always providing a good starting point in researching topics. To Fraser Brown of PC Games N for some clarification on a specific topic. And of course, to the almighty Google God. And I suppose that's that. Folks, if you weren't watching, sharing, and supporting these videos, I wouldn't be making them. So most importantly, thank you to all of you. As always, I am Michael of Gamer Poets. Thank you for watching.